What's going, man? What's up? And welcome back to another video. Three true pizza deliver horror stories animated. Um, I know y'all be enjoying these types of videos and these types of stories, so I thought we'd do another one. This one just dropped. So let's get into it. When I was 19, I worked for a small town pizza delivery company near my house. I worked here as a means to save up money while I was in college. I lived with my parents, so I didn't have many expenses. You just sound depressed. I was able to live fairly frugally and save around 80% of my money, which was nice. After a couple of months of working there, the manager quickly gave me a promotion. He really yeah. liked my work ethic, but of course, with a raise comes more responsibility. Instead of just making the pizza, I was now responsible for picking up the phone and sometimes doing dishes and even delivering the pizza myself. It's valid. Yeah, more pay, like more work. Pizza. That was my favorite part of my job, because it barely felt like I was working. Most nights I would walk away with $75 or more in tips, plus mm. my $12 an hour wage, which it's wasn't horrible good. for the time being. I enjoyed driving around and listening to music while doing my deliveries. Good to your face. I've always known it was a somewhat dangerous job, especially delivering at night in unfamiliar areas in either a rough part of town or in the middle of nowhere. Sometimes, unfortunately, mm. you also run into the non-tippers, or people that try to perk. make your life a living hell. I was pretty Some stoic, ecstasy. though, and I was very good at keeping my composure when things like this would okay. happen. However, this night in particular was something else, and caught me off guard completely. There was a man that would call our restaurant every so often, and he would always say something weird. Probably then he would hang up right after. That. Sort of like a prank call. One time he said he was going to bang my mom, and another mm. time he asked me how my skin tasted. Mm. We always Weird knew it was him because of the caller ID, but we weren't allowed to block him. Company etiquette, I guess. Eventually I just stopped answering his calls altogether. After some time, he stopped calling, thankfully, but he called again months later, and I picked up the phone. Right away, I recognized his voice and realized who I was talking to. Except this time, he said he actually wanted a pizza and he wasn't being weird like usual. About time. He even apologized to me. He's just said that wasting he our time. Again, and that he just wants a pizza fair and square. He even said that he will tip the driver we send out $30 in an effort to apologize. Unfortunately, I wasn't really allowed to say no to a customer, anyways. My manager wasn't there and he had just left a few minutes before. And I wasn't going to send one of the teenagers out there in the middle of the night to deal with this creepy guy. So I decided to do it myself. That's valid. I didn't think anything would happen to me and I thought I could hold my ground. I took his order and I wrote down his address. When the pizza was done, I stepped in my car and off I was to his house. The closer I got, the more I realized that maybe this wasn't a great situation to be in. I got this no sinking die. feeling inside that felt like disparity. It was about a 12 minute drive or so, which wasn't too far, but it was, however, right on the county line. If it would have been another mile away, it would have been out of our delivery range. I knew I had to deliver this pizza, and it was too late to turn around. I turned onto the dirt road, and before I could fully realize what I was getting myself into, I was at the house. Mm. I stopped and stared at the creepy tall white house for a minute. That bit looked like the house that was in Murder inside, House nor a that I played. Place at all. I got out of my car, and when my headlights shut off, I could barely see anything in front of me. I can barely see anything right now because of these shades. The on the porch, but I knew that wasn't proper but, and you know, look bad on the company. F it, we ball. Plus, I remembered the $30 tip that he promised. Before I even knocked, the door swung open and creaked the whole way. It was a bald man, middle-aged. Probably around 40 or so. Hey Josh, mm. nice to finally meet you. The man said. Oh, why does he sound like that? How did he know my name? I stopped and stared and realized he probably read my name tag on my shirt. Still, it was extremely creepy given the circumstances. Your total is $23.22, sir. He looked at me for a prolonged period of time with a creepy smile on his face before saying, Okay. Oh, that was all he said. I don't like that. I was waiting for him to hand me the money, but he was just looking at me with his soulless eyes. Then, that was right when he said one of the most uncomforting things that anyone has ever said to me. Has anyone ever tried to hurt you before? You know, kick that nigga in the nuts. Deliveries. 
Yeah. Yeah, man, kick that nigga in the nest and run. Looked at him with That's a crazy thing to ask. Said, no. Um, what do you mean? Oh, nothing, he exclaimed. I just wondered. There are a lot of weirdos out here, so you never know. His grin became oh. wider, like his devilish plan was about to unfold. I got a surge of energy and paranoia that bolted from my chest, and I told Those him that I had to leave before getting my tip or even giving him his change. I ran to my car, and just then, I heard footsteps to my right approaching me from the distance in the darkness. Luckily, I was faster than them, and I made it to my car safely. See, that's... This is what I'm talking about. When I be watching these, these niggas have terrible. This is this is great survival instincts. He sensed danger and he fled. He, he didn't he didn't stay and wait it. He didn't investigate. He sensed danger. He sensed that it was an unwinnable situation and he cleared it. This is this is what we need more of. We need to stop investigating. Stop fighting if you're gonna lose. You know. Sometimes you just got to get out of there. Off rip. I looked behind me as I slammed my door shut and turned the car on. There were two grown men standing right in front of my car, and one of them had a baseball bat in his hands. Mm. And they both had ski masks on. I beelined out of there and never looked back. See? As I was backing out, I ran over a man that I hadn't seen yet that was also wearing a mask. Fuck I had him. no idea if he lived or not. Fuck him. Maybe I committed manslaughter that night. I'll never really know. Nobody at the restaurant believed me about this story besides one of my good friends, Jimmy. So I ended up quitting a few days later. When I got home that night and told my parents, we called the police and those people were gone. The house was vacant and I genuinely believe whoever those people were were planning on murdering me or worse. Mm. I don't want to even think of what's worse than that, but selling my organs on the black market isn't completely out of the question now, is it? I remember one of the most traumatizing moments of Hot my life. Hot pizza. Like it was yesterday. Yeah, like Little Caesars. It all started on a normal Saturday. I worked as a pizza delivery driver for just shy of two years, but I quit the very same night all of this happened. As a teenager, my friends and I used to be those neighborhood degenerate kids that every neighbor would hate to have. I'm only barely being harsh on myself because it's the truth. Sometimes we would ding dong ditch the houses a few streets over, and sometimes we would do the same house more than once on the same nights, just to see if we could get a better mm. reaction. Well, there was a man named Mr. Johnson. He knew most like of us kids, West, wasn't very fond of us. He knew blonde. what we were up to in the neighborhood, I think. Probably the same degeneracy he was up to as a young boy as well. I'm sure yeah, he thought we were the ones knocking on his door all those nights, but he really didn't have the proof. So Look things were always forced to stay civil between us. I always wondered if he had a hunch. We messed with him multiple weekends that summer. Just mad and lonely and bored. Well, fast forward to September of the same year, I was working my usual night shift delivering pizzas. When I got an order for a simple cheese pizza, I noticed that it was the same street as my parents, in the same neighborhood. But what I had no clue was that the order was for Mr. Johnson's house. It wasn't until that I was halfway down the street that I realized who the order was for. The name was under Mark, which had to be Mr. Johnson's first name, I assumed. I swallowed my pride and hoped he wouldn't recognize me. I knocked on the door and waited, with every second feeling like the time was standing still, when finally, the door swung open. In an instant, Mr. Johnson was towering over me and I got a huge whiff of what his house smelled like. Gas. It was a very off-putting smell coming from that house. Oh, never mind. It smelled like garbage. Oh. Hello. He saw oh. a creepy smile rubbing off his face took a step closer and he hunched over to whisper oh. something in my ear. I could now smell his breath. Oh. Which smelled like rotten eggs and stale cigarettes. If you ever come back here, I will kill you. He said. And the same thing goes for your stupid little friends. Oh, and he patted me on the back and gave me a $50 bill, which covered the pizza and added a generous tip. I didn't say anything. Our eyes locked together, and I think he got the hint that I understood him loud and clear. After I got mm. in my car, Mr. Johnson was standing right where I saw him last, and he was staring me down. I bolted out of there, but not before noticing him lifting his shirt up, which revealed a gun tucked in his Man, pants. I thought that was going to take a then whole different turn. His hand in the shape of a fake gun. So glad he didn't, didn't pull his, his, his meat out. 
I was too nervous to tell my friends about what happened as they would probably make fun of me for being scared. Yeah, scary, yeah, nigga. And I knew that would only make them want to mess with him more. And I was right, because a few weeks later, I ended up telling them. We were all hanging out when they all decided it was time to go out and egg some houses. Ooh, there's a part Mr. two. Johnson's. I was worried about all of our safety, so I had to tell them. I ended up getting into a huge argument with my friends, and they sort of laughed at me and called me a pussy like I thought they would. You're kind of They don't understand the seriousness of this man, and neither do any of you listening. He was a very scary man, and he was a lot bigger up close. He had some muscle on him, and he looked like a neo-Nazi. A man that doesn't fuck around. Let me put it that way. I didn't want no to man puts out, fear so in my heart. I stayed home that night and I stayed in any other time after that. You're not towering over me. I Since bet he don't tower over me. With Mr. Johnson, I'm just worried that he's going to think that money on that. I don't go outside by myself very often in my own neighborhood because I'm worried I will run into him. I told my parents and they said I deserved it for being a dumbass, which might be <laughs> partially true, but I don't think I deserve to die. Parents be dickheads sometimes. For what I did, I like my life and would like to continue living it. Maybe I'm the asshole. Like, it's like, damn, like, you're my parent. Comfort me. Like, I'm, I'm your child. But they just be like, nah, that's what you get for being an idiot, you dumbass. But it's like, damn, hug me. Tell me it's okay. Everybody makes mistakes, you know? But, well, you know, what do I know? I was unemployed and desperate. My fiance was sick and we just had a newborn. Mm, it was up to me good. to bring some money in that we needed badly. I had a good job at General Motors, getting paid quite well, but I was laid off and eventually fired completely. No. I searched and searched for any job that would hire me, and after a couple of days of walking into every restaurant in town, I got myself an interview. It was at a small local pizza place in my small town that I grew up in. I loved this place growing up, so it was going to be cool to see how the food was made after all these years. They needed a driver, and I of course accepted. I got the hang of everything quickly as the job really is as simple as it sounds. I didn't even have to make the food, unlike what I expected. My one and only job was to take the pizza to the customers and keep a polite mannerism while doing so. The money tips. obviously wasn't great, but it paid the bills, which was the most important part. I worked here for maybe five months and nothing bad really happened until the last week that I worked there. I put my two weeks in after this incident and ended up leaving before the two weeks were even up. Y'all hear the background music? I got an order for a pizza, and just like normal, I got in my car and headed that way. Up until this point, the worst thing about being a pizza delivery driver for me, and the only horrific thing to happen, if you even want to call it that, was when the customer didn't tip. Trying to put me in a trance right now. Night. On average, I would deliver about 10 or so pizzas a night, and there was always that one guy or grouchy woman who wouldn't tip. It sucked, but it was just part of the job. I'm pretty sure what I experienced this night was far more horrific than a mean troll of a woman not tipping every once in a while. The house was in a rural area, which definitely added a sprout of creepiness, but also curiosity. I pulled into the driveway and I couldn't see the house. There were trees all in the front yard and I was starting to get nervous. It doesn't sound scary, but I've heard horror stories that start out like this before. And little did I know, I was about to become one of those stories. Mm. I crept up the driveway until I saw the front porch. I stopped the car immediately and walked up there quickly, but also quietly. You better walk up there with some confidence. I knocked on the door, and then I noticed after waiting for a minute, there was a piece of paper with tape on it, on the ground, that looked like it may have fallen from the door, with 40 bucks taped to the back of it. It said, please bring the pizza inside, just set it right in front of the door. That's when I really started feeling queasy. I'd open that bit, throw it in there. there. I'd open so that bit, place it right in front of the door, close it, clear it. I wish I would have just left like I was planning to, but I felt guilty for not doing what the note asked. So after debating with the devil and the angel on my shoulder for probably five minutes, I hustled out of the car and back up to the porch. No business stood on. He's a bitch. I opened the front door and set the pizza down quickly. Hello? Anyone there? pizza's here nobody answered but i heard something that spooked me so i ran away i went to close the door on my way out but i left it cracked open by accident there was a man that came trampling outside a few seconds too late. oh 
He was wearing all black clothing and a creepy old man mask. He had a large shiny object in his hand, which I assumed was a knife. I drove out of there as fast as I could, and my heart was beating through my chest. I had just escaped being murdered by only a few seconds. Okay, great. That just happened, I said to myself. I couldn't believe it. All those horror stories you hear growing up, and eventually something like it happening to you. It felt like the world was ending, even though I knew I was safe. I kept having nightmares back to that night when I was driving away from him. He would chase me down and ram me off the road. <clears throat> and then ultimately, it usually ended with him murdering me. This evil man has never been found as far as I know. Of course I called the police, but nobody owns a house just like we all expected. I was almost the victim of a horrifying trap. Always listen to your gut. I hope y'all enjoyed this one. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, share. Turn the post notification bells on. You know, all that good stuff. And um, peace, love, and positivity. And I will catch y'all in the next one, man. It's two options in this world. Is you going to win or lose? Is you going to take the risk or not? You know you got to choose. Yeah, I can't keep one, so all my bitches come in twos.